Hello Virgos! I am Jade and this is Star Moon and Sun Tarot. I'm here doing a yearly forecast reading for the sign Virgo for 2020. Alright, what I've done here is I've gone through and I have uh, pulled from a couple oracle decks. But first of all, let me just say that this is going to be for Virgo, whether you have it in your sun, your moon, um, your rising or ascendant, your Venus, uh, any placement. Really, uh, there could be messages for you here. Cross watchers are welcome, as always. Um, I've pulled from three oracle decks. I've cycled through them, as I've done for every sign. All right, the Wisdom of the Oracle, the Enchanted Map Oracle, and the Sacred Destiny Oracle. And then I've pulled from those as well as, let me see... I pulled also Fairy Blessing for the year. There's like an overall yearly pile here. Um, I pulled from the Mystical Shaman and these Magical Dimensions cards. All right, I pulled some of those for the year. I'm going to look at those at the end. So I have pulled some Oracle cards for each month of the year and then the overall messages and energies from the year. I'm going to be clarifying with two different decks, okay? One is the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. It's a little different than the traditional. Okay. It does not have um, a lot of the major arcana. Some are still similar, but it, it has a choice card, eight um, stages for, of life, eight reasons for being, and eight influences that could be affecting you or the situation or those around you. Okay. I also have the good tarot. Okay. Um, and initially with a lot of these readings, I wasn't really worried about a lot of reversals. I was just getting it, you know, just kind of a, an overlying storyline. I'm not looking in depth at the months. Um, but for whatever reason, I did the Taurus video and I was very strongly guided to take the cards how they fell. And there were some uh, strong reversals and warnings in that one, okay? So if I do feel that need, I will hear. Um... Yeah, and in general, the water readings um, and the earth readings drained me a lot more than the air signs and the fire signs did for the, uh, you know, it was just really weird. So I am sorry that these took a little while to get done and up, but uh, I think I bit off more than I could chew. But it'll be interesting to go back throughout the year and see how these things are playing out. All right, um, but yeah, by, by uh, this upcoming weekend, I'll be back to the shorter more normal uh, reads. I've got some uh, interesting love readings planned. All right, so let's get into it. And um, if this resonates with you, please subscribe. You'll get notified when I upload new videos. And hopefully I can check back in with these energies and be able to help, you know, guide you or peek in on things, see what's up. All right. So for January 2020, you guys got two. You got time for a nap. All right, and I always equate this to like the Four of Swords type of energy, needing to rest, relax, recharge, maybe meditate a bit. It is a 24, so that goes to a 6. And then this message in a bottle came out. This was, uh, that was in the deck as well. All right, that's 15. Um, this talks about a communication coming through um, with, the, with the phone in the bottle. It also talks about uh, messages from spirit coming in during this uh, meditation, rejuvenation, quiet time for January Virgos. Uh, one thing that was coming through during my pre-shuffles and meditation was some of you might be dealing with some um, self-esteem, body image type issues. Um, if you are, it's important to, you know, seek counseling for that. Anorexia, bulimia, even just low self-esteem, all right? Um, that might only just be for a very few number of people, um, but that was something that I thought was important to say, um, for whatever reason that was coming through. So, let's see here. A lot of good stuff though, too. A lot of good stuff was, uh, for the year, lots of, lots of positivity. Yeah, abundance here at the bottom of the deck. Let's see what else. What else for January 2020, please, for Virgo? Angel spirits, guys, anyone for the highest good, please. Ancestors, council members, what are we going to show Virgo here? What does Virgo need to know? Whoa, this one. Yeah, this is the three of fire, okay? This is all about 
because um, you know this is like the three of wands so the two of wands is making a decision in passion right the three of wands is that decision is made you're off on a new adventure a new journey something you are passionate about with it being of the fire element okay i just what was this okay king of air it flew <laughs> over here okay so you could have air in your chart or this could be a gemini libra or aquarius um coming into your life or this is just um the air coming out if you have air in your chart making you very decisive very clear and sure let's see what the good tarot wants to show us king of earth in the middle here with the five of fire so you might have felt conflicted possibly about someone from the past okay six of water is on the bottom here what else for virgo for january okay Ooh, a transformation it did show in the reverse okay so this is traditionally the death card, okay, but it's also uh, a chance for a new beginning and um, something that, whether it comes out, you know, reverse, you know, either something has died or something is coming back to life, which means it had to die in the first place. All right, so death or death reversed. Um, five of air. Okay, this is traditionally the five of swords. Ooh, and justice. Justice was on the floor, but it was upright. All right, so some type of justice is, is assuming you may have felt um, this was something you may have had to fight for. You might be walking away from, okay, with the three of wands, something transforming and it being justice. Yeah, this is Libra energy as well, Scorpio energy, okay. And this is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius here. Wands energy. All right, that's for January. If any of that is uh, resonating with you, check back in with me. Subscribe. You'll get notified. I have more readings. I will try to tune back in and see what else I can see, okay? For February 2020, we got unexpected visitors. Unexpected visitors. And see, sometimes I'm guided to, like, read the whole big long thing through the book. But, um... I'm not needing to do that here. This is something unexpected, an unexpected gift, surprise. Um, expect the unexpected here, okay? Hmm. It also might have to do with, um, you know, not, not expecting, like you might have been expecting something else. But we got the ten of water on the bottom. Let's see else about this unexpected visitors who might show up in the middle of the night yeah okay so this is traditionally the five of pentacles it's the five of earth okay so it could be being left out in the cold someone who has left you out in the cold someone you feel addicted to you might feel like you're taking a gamble but sometimes those things can work out other times not so much let's see this is the ace of water. Uh, how did that just show? It, I, I'm not feeling like it's reversed. Even with this devil energy, I, I feel like, um, I don't know. For some of you, it could be um, a challenge. Mm, messenger of water on the bottom. Messenger of water is on the bottom. Uh, yeah, the sun, it's not reversed, okay? It's a little sideways. That's not a reversal, okay? It might take a little effort to um, fully see this Ace of Cups, all right? It might start out as something unexpected. What else? Anything else for February? For Virgo. Okay, one more. Seven of Earth, yeah. Okay, I feel like whatever this is, you can trust it. I feel like this is... You know, the Seven of Earth is, is wanting to put effort in, wanting to work together. Um, I feel like it's good. It may have started, it, it might be, um, you know, it's bad, but it feels so good, you know? <laughs> but not in a bad way, in a good way. 
All right, February. So we got Libra energy. This is also, you know, this is all energy. This sign is any sign, really. Could be Leo, Ace of Cups. Um, could be Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. All right, for February, let's keep going. March. Fulfillment. Fulfillment. This is about abundance, and I want to look at the book for this one. I just feel like there might be real specific words. This is the Laden Peach Tree. Happy marriage, fertility, big ripe peaches. Yeah. This is fulfillment being at hand, no matter what is occurring. Put attention on what is splendid, pleasurable, and luscious. Find bliss in the moment. Love fully, deeply, without hesitation. Let go of people and things that don't feel empower, empowering and drag your energy down. If you've had any health issues, a ripe peach represents a return to better health, okay? Savor your life with gusto and grace. If you want to conceive a baby or a new project, start a new relationship, this card is an excellent omen for a great outcome, all right? For March 2020. What else? What else for March 2020, Spirits, please? For the highest good only for Virgo. What else? Ooh, knowledge. You're gaining a lot of knowledge. Some of you might be taking a class, going back to school, abundance again. I feel like... You guys are really going to be working on your abundance this year. Building a lot of knowledge. That one. Yes. This is the Nine of Fire. Okay. In traditional tarot, this would be the Nine of Wands. Okay. The Wounded Warrior. You might be this Wounded Warrior. Okay. But I feel like... This is the time. The opportunity is ripe for the picking. I feel like this is a continuing storyline here. You're gaining this knowledge. It's a good time, okay, for relationships, for healing, and lots of abundance. Ace of Air just flipped. Yeah, that's like the Ace of Swords. That's that clarity. Real clear, honest Clear in the direction. Yeah, page of air. You might be being a little cautious. You might be watching someone. They could be watching you, okay? But there's going to be um, honest communication coming through for March 2020. I love this. Okay. Let's keep going with April. Ooh, clean it up. You, ooh, spring cleaning. All right. This is a three as well, so I feel like this could have to do with out with the old, in with the new uh, type of energy. You're uh, cleaning out the old for the new. Doing your spring cleaning, ending anything. That ah, here's the hero. This is another interesting thing about this deck. Okay, this deck, the the dreams of Gaia. It doesn't have like the knights or pages, messengers or whatever. Instead, it's got. Um, these, they have one for each element. They stand beside the king and queen of this element. This is the hero. Okay, this is like an archetype. All right, this, this guy, uh, stands beside, or, or girl. It could be a masculine or a feminine. You can't really tell, okay? And it doesn't matter. We all contain both those energies. But this, um, could be spiritual guidance. Okay? Um, this could be someone who is a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sag, or has it in their chart. All right, but I feel like this is guiding you. Um, this could even be you. You are in your element. You're passionate. You're abundant. You're successful. And you're being more and more guided towards that and towards things that serve you, okay? Um, if um, This could also be like, like the, your person, okay? They're... They might be, like, literally your hero. And, um, whoa, my lord. Just as I said that, okay, love fell out on it. This is the nine of air. Okay, the cards in this deck, they can be translated over. You might have been in your thoughts about this a lot. Um, but here it's kind of like, it's more coming out of that energy. This is like, as above, so below. This is seeing the bigger picture. This is coming into unity here. Yeah. Here's the Seven of Cups. 
Okay, and in this deck, this is literally, this is the queen of fire of this deck. All right. You could really uh, be be uh, doing something here with a fire sign. You could, uh, yeah, 2777. Seven, seven. And I don't feel like it's bad or imbalanced. I feel like this is you guys um, putting in the effort, defending this this union, this connection. This is typically two of swords, you know, but uh, stalemate energy. But here, it's not. Here, this is like the two of air. This is that balance. More Libra and energy. A lot of you may have Libra in your chart. I didn't realize so many cards were going to fall out, but we're leaving them. I'm keeping it. It's good. It's not negative. There's really no negative cards in any of these decks. I mean, there are. There's. I can definitely get negative storylines. I just did for Taurus. Yeah, strength. Some of you are definitely dealing with a Leo. Okay, with all this fiery energy. Um, I do pick up a strong Virgo Leo tie. I usually do. Again, subscribe, check back. <laughs> Ten of air. This is um, closing out an old cycle. Yeah, with the world here, I feel like this is, uh, this is going to be powerful. You could be traveling. You could be rebuilding, uh, reconciling, uh, coming out of separation, or finding somebody... This is, uh, this is good. And you're cleaning out the old and, uh, stepping into, like, a new life, I feel. This is beautiful. I love this. This is for April. May. Let's look at May. Okay. The Enchanted Map. This is Spark. It came out in reverse. So we are going to look at that. Um, Spark is 34. All right, because upright, it all talks about that uh, spark of creativity and stuff. All right, but reversed, it says sometimes your fire gets doused by others who don't want you to be all you can be. Um, this can indicate you're allowing yourself to be so consumed by thought, feeling, or situation. You're in danger of becoming so... Don't let things burn you out. Don't be compulsive. Okay? Um, don't be compulsive. Don't be impulsive. Don't be too clingy. Don't let people, um, don't let haters, you know, get you down. Um, yeah, you might have to let things die down a bit. Maybe things got a little overly passionate, a little overly heated, a little too intense. Um, it says let things die down. You'll see if the true spark will be there. If not, you can always light another fire at another time. It doesn't necessarily have to be with love, okay? It could be, um, with a new project, job. You might have to just slow down, take a step back. Maybe it got out of control, out of hand. King of Fires on the bottom of the deck here. For the Gaia. What else? What else about the Spark Rivers? What does Virgo need to know? Ooh. For May 2020. Destiny. Yeah, this is definitely... Um, everything's happening in divine timing. Yeah, Union! Oh my gosh. All right, so if this does have to do with having to take a step back from this union, don't worry, okay? This is your destiny, this union. So if you have to step back from this, what we were just talking about for the past February, March, and April, okay? Um, if you have to take a step back, pff, journey on the bottom now. Um, it's part of your journey. Trust, okay? Just trust yourself here. Here's the moon on the bottom. Some secrets might be coming out. Love. This definitely has to do with, with love. Or if the... Oh, emperor. If the spark has died out with you and somebody else, and you this new energy has not come in, or this separation has not been um, resolved by May, here he comes. Or she. Okay for this union, this destiny, this love. Um, yeah, you might have to put a pause on it with the hanged man and the spark in reverse. If you do, um, do not worry. It's all in your highest good, and I feel like whatever pause needs to come, look at these major arcana look. Like, this is nuts. These are even considered the major arcana of this deck. Um, so for May 2020, I mean, you guys, 
This is nuts. You gotta subscribe. This is watery energy, okay? This is love, so this is like the lovers. This is like Gemini. I do notice she's with a lion again, though. Just saying, and this emperor has a lion's head. Okay, so some of you are definitely dealing with a Leo or a fire sign. Wow. This is amazing. Subscribe, guys. <laughs> Subscribe. I will be tuning back into this energy. I told you, I always get a strong Virgo-Leo connection. All right. June 2020 opportunity. Yeah, you guys are going to have opportunities coming in. Hmm on your journey. <laughs> what else about this opportunity, please, for the highest good, for Virgo? What does Virgo need to know about this opportunity? Ooh, there might be some conflict, okay? It might be something you're, you're conflicted about. Ooh, two of water. Ooh, the maiden. The maiden is all about you know, it's it's uh, that fresh perspective in love. It's that true... Oh, you might be making a choice. I just looked down after I finished shuffling. This might have to do with a choice. Maybe you've had to step away from one and you're conflicted. So I'm literally like, you may be making a choice to, this is like the eight of water, eight of cups, to walk away from a, possibly a fire sign towards a king of water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. This is the, um, this is like learning, knowledge. Yeah. All right. And this is the eight of fire, which is like the eight of wands, communication. Oh, let's see here. Oh, boy. All right, I'm not going to take all of those for this. I was just saying that's a possibility for some of you here. Yeah, Ace of Water. There's an opportunity for an Ace of Cups here, and it might be um, with somebody else, somebody new. Um, they, like, literally might be fighting over you. I mean, it, that's not good. you got to stop and make a choice, but it's kind of, like, hot at the same time. High Priestess, yeah. Okay, with the High pri What? Okay, so check it. The Empress, probably you guys. You might be feeling conflicted and stuff. You're going to have to use your intuition. Somebody might have secrets. Yeah, Queen of Air in reverse. Okay, um... Yeah, some of you are separating for good from an air sign. For this, the fire sign, the Leo, uh, Aries, Sagittarius. Some of you are separating from a uh, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius to go towards a water sign, possibly. Um, but some of you might be involved in a third party situation here. Or somebody is uh, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Or um, you have it in your chart. This is you, not. Possibly not listening to your spirit guides, not listening to your intuition, not making a choice, thus causing more conflict, okay? And that could be why the Empress was a little bit to the side, and this was, you know, that might be something you're struggling with, okay? For June 2020. And I am leaving these cards with this. Alright. You have the choice, Okay. Emperor and Empress energy side by side here for May and June. That's beautiful. And I feel like um, whatever conflict or whatever, you know, I feel like it is going to clear up, okay? Again, if this is resonating in any way, shape, or form, please subscribe. I will continue to, uh, I tend to tune into the same energy. All right, yeah, July 2020. Observer. You might have to take a step back. See things from a new perspective, from with a little distance, okay? Um, somebody could be watching you. I feel like you're definitely watching someone. They're watching you as well. But you, you need this perspective uh, from this situation. What else about observer? What do they need to um, observe? What's being observed? This queen of air. 
All right, so this could be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. They could be watching you. You could be watching them. Like I said, this could be a third party situation, so be aware of that. Yeah. Okay. This is the nine of water. All right. So this is this is there's wish fulfillment here. Somebody is very strongly um, guided here, but. All right, so this is that the um, three of um, air. Uh, this is not the same as like uh, the three of swords in the normal tarot. This could have, this might even be the three of um, yeah no this is the three of air. It's weird because it reminds me of the three of uh, pentacles, like um, which can be learning, going back to school, building, gaining knowledge, things like that. All right, but it came out in like reverse. I feel like somebody is so focused on their wish fulfillment that they're not learning the lessons that they need to learn. And it could be a third party, um, or it could be you guys, or it could be whoever you're dealing with, okay? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, at least it's coming upright this time, which is a little bit more decisive, a little better. Um... Let me just see what these three are. Page of Fire. Okay. This is definitely um, the opportunity for communication. And Page of Earth. Yeah, this is a choice. You've got a choice between two. Or somebody does. Okay. Page of Earth, Page of Fire. And the Moon Reverse. Okay, so whatever um, secrets have been being kept are going to come out. Things are coming to light here. Okay. So that is for July 2020. All right, so moving on, August 2020, what we got? Metamorphosis, something is changing. It's a big change. Could be you, it could be someone around you. What else about this change? Please, for Virgo, for the highest good, what do they need to know for August 2020 about this, about this metamorphosis? Oh, all right. It's about your journey. This is the Six of Air, so it's the Six of Swords. Okay, this talks about moving away to calmer waters in the traditional tarot. Um, here, it's very much about um, balance, um, getting a lot, very spiritual, very spiritual. You might be a spiritual healer, um, highly intuitive. You could be an empath, okay? And this is a four of air, like the four of swords. This talks about everything being in divine timing, there being an intricate plan, okay? And um, rest, meditation. I feel like you're, the metamorphosis, like you're going into possibly a little cocoon for a little while, I'm seeing. Like, literally. But um, it's got to do with your journey. So it is, a, you know, for your highest good, this transformation. Yeah. Because here's that two of air again. Again, it's, that, it's like two of swords. It's like that stalemate kind of energy. But um, you got, you know, you're metamorphing out of it. And you're also, with all these thoughts, you know, all this air, these are thoughts, 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 thoughts. This is traditionally the nightmare card, okay? You're going you're gonna to come out of all this, though. All right? You're going to change. Something is changing, and it is, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I feel that. So let's keep going with September 2020. Yes, going forward. That's what I mean. You're going to make that transition so you can move forward. I am going to look this one up really quick. Um, sometimes I feel like I should, just in case there's real specific words or phrases that are meant for specific people. This is the grassy hills, and it talks about the abundant families of plants. Okay, and how like literally plants are the whole basis of sustaining our entire environment, which is true. 
all right and just grass in general grass is really amazing we don't it's one of those things it goes unnoticed a lot of the time everyone's so busy looking at the trees or the flowers but no one really thinks about that huge interconnected network of grass it kind of is like um how we're all connected source consciousness almost all right when you receive this card fertility productivity Love, health, abundance, and fulfillment are ahead for you. Woohoo! Things are growing and expanding. Keep going forward. Sometimes it may be easy to be distracted by what's occurring around you. But this card indicates it's important not to let anything hold you back from increasing the bounty of your life. Your life is escalating and intensifying in the best possible way for your highest good. Love that. I am loving that. All right. So what else for the September 2020 for Virgo? Wah! What's that? Ah! And that, and that. Okay, let's see. Um, I don't... How the heck was that? Regardless, this is the two of Earth. This one isn't as important. I mean, because if you're off balance, I feel like you're regaining your balance here. This is like the juggling, the two of pentacles. You might have been looking at a couple different things for a while. Ooh, faith, I love this. You're... Ha you have faith in something. You've made a choice. You're abundant. You have faith, you got this spiritual guidance, and moving forward, moving forward. Here's the nine of fire on the bottom. What? Where'd that go? Eh. The star. Yeah, this is spiritual guidance. Your wish is coming through. Um, okay, we did have the tower fall out here, but it fell like over here you know, sideways, so I feel like it's in your past. You're moving forward, past whatever this is, to your wish fulfillment, anything else. King of Earth, yeah. I feel like this is you guys. I mean, you could definitely meet um, a Taurus, Capricorn, or another Virgo. Um, an Aquarius. You could have Aquarius in your chart. But this is wish fulfillment. This is moving past everything here as, you know, abundant, having faith, moving forward into this beautiful future. Got the Ace of Earth on the bottom of the deck, guys. So, that I'm going to leave it at that. September is looking good. Looking good in the neighborhood. So, I'm going to move these here. We're going to look at those at the end. That's September. Let's go to October. Imagine. Oh, I love this. Imagine is literally about manif like manif like imagining big, dream big, dream big because your manifest manifestations are going to come into reality. I'm so excited. Oh my god. This is like uh this is good. Really, really good. What else for this imagine for October 2020 for Virgo, please? For the highest good. Show me what I need to see. This one. Mhm. Mm yeah. You've passed some test on integrity, Virgo, okay? You've kept your integrity, and you're being rewarded. The universe is going to give you your ten of cups here. Dream big, okay? Use your integrity to dream big. But I also feel like um, because you have you know, maintained your integrity, you're going to get a big old gift from the universe. That one. Yeah, eight of water. You may have had to, you know... Keep your integrity and walk away from something in your past. Because, you know, what's the Eight of Cups? It's walking away. Okay, you're walking away for your Ten of Cups. Walking away from the Eight of Cups to the Two of Cups. Yeah, I'll look at this. Magician in reverse. Yep, like this is what I'm saying. This is one of those reversals. You were manipulated and deceived by somebody here. And um, you're going into a state of rest with this four of air, with this meditation and dreaming. And they're saying, imagine, dream your dreams big, because this ten of cups is coming for you. The hierophant's on the bottom. I feel like I've taken enough cards on this, actually. I'm done. I'm not going to, I can't say anything else about this. I, sorry, I just heard that really, like, mm-mm. Sorry, we gotta keep going. Some things we're just not allowed to see or look at, or they'll just keep leading us in circles. Um, and even this is kind of a stretch far into the future, okay? November 2020, let's see. Field of dreams. Yeah, again. This is again about 
dreaming your visions into reality, you might want to start keeping a dream journal. Some of you might be getting um, important guidance, visions in your dreams. Oh, here's the scribe on the bottom. The scribe is the one he stands by the uh, king and queen of air. He's, he's the dude that uh, accesses the Akashic records. Um, so, yeah, dream big. Some perception is going to shift, or you've had a change in perception, or a king of fire. Aries, Leo, Sag, look at that cute little lion. There's been a shift in perception, either from one or about one, okay? And everything's changing. Two of pentacles is about that choice, making that choice. Anything else? You're going to be, you know, regaining your balance here. Yeah, judgment call. There it is. There it is. A judgment has been made. Four of Earth just flipped. Somebody's holding on. Somebody's not willing to let this go. Could be someone from your past. Could be somebody new. Um, you know, you also could be uh, holding back a bit, but there's going to be a shift in perception. This is good. I like it. So that is November 2020. Let's look at December. Embracing. Oh my God, I love this. I want to read from the book. Hold on. Got to read from the book for whatever reason. Ah! It just slammed shut on me. I'll open right back up to the right page. Floodplains. Okay, this is the naturally occurring phenomenon that... Uh, oh yeah. Okay, because it talks about the water. This is the floodplain. So land that is normally dry, maybe underwater. <laughs> That's a lot of emotion coming in. <laughs> and you're Virgo. You're the earth sign. So it's like a flood of emotion coming in. Sometimes life overflows with emotions, which can feel uncomfortable. However, the ensuing result of this discomfort can be great value, perhaps arising from an unseen or unknown force. You get this card when emotions are overflowing or not flowing at all. Cherish the overflow and embrace the times that seem murky, for your inner flood planes are being replenished. And as a result, there will be great spiritual and physical expansion. I love this. If your emotions have been blocked, it's the time to explore and experience them. All right? Maybe you were blocked from somebody for quite a while and, and you know, had to get a change in perception on things. Yeah, Queen of Earth. This is you guys. What else? Mm-hmm. The Two of Fire is always about a choice and passion. Um, I feel like you've made your choice. I feel like it's going to be good here. What's this? Patience. You've had a lot of patience. And you've moved away to... You've moved to calmer waters. All right? This is definitely going to be good. I've got, like, no cards left anymore. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you're... You're, you're, this is the nine of earth. I feel like if you are still the abundant single woman, you've been very patient and something really good is coming as a result. Okay. Whew. But yeah, this is also like, this is you good on your own calmer waters. You're being patient. I feel like, again, there's some things we're not quite allowed to see yet. So that was it for the year. I want to look at these. I asked for the most pertinent yearly messages, lessons, warnings, anything really important, okay? So I did it for all the decks I took from. I'm going to get started. Flexibility. This could be a big one this year for you guys, okay? Learning to be flexible. All right. Flexibility. Learning to uh, know when to release and when to grab on. Magic prayer. I want to look at this in the book. Very drawn to look at this in the book. Do magic prayer. Speak your prayers. Listen for the answers and act in faith. Your prayers will be answered. Spirit is wanting to help and heal you. Thy will be done through me. Thy will and not mine be done. Conscious contact with your higher power is achieved through the ritual of prayer and meditation. Speak and listen to the divine forces. 
surrender your wishes and desires for spirit. You may not get what you want, but you will surely get what you need, okay? Talks about, uh, you know, being on your path for your highest good. Ooh. Yeah, you're on a voyage to freedom. Okay? You're gonna feel free. You're gonna feel free even if you're in a committed relationship, okay? It's not gonna be tying down. It's not gonna weigh you down. It's not gonna be negative. All right, let's see. Look at your fairy blessing. Ooh, you got a blessing of the wild within. I love this. This is again more. Um, I feel like I feel very like airy energy when I look at this. Um, let me see what it. I just want to read from the book really, really quick. Just whatever pops out at me. This is the fairy gift of the untamed heart. Okay, this is a within you, a wild place, pure and untouched, uh, pure and untouched by conditioning and should and should nots. This is a calling back to your wild self. Let the wild within flow all the way through you. Wow, may the blessings of the wild within offer you a return to the natural, most innate parts of you. Let them arise and dance and sing. Let the untamed heart of you warm all that is about you. That's beautiful. I love that. I feel like this is a very, like, free-spirited energy. All right, so let me get my other books out here so I can look up what else. So from the Mystical Shaman Oracle 3 came. The Mystical Shaman card itself. That's a big lesson for this year. Wow. The Eagle. Again, more uh, air energy. Some of you guys definitely have air in your chart. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or you are close with one, deal with one, and the staff. I'm going to read all three of these, okay? And this is 38, which reduces down to an 11, 7, 6, okay? So first I'm going to look at Mystical Shaman because that was the one that was, you know, first. So this is the symbol of the myth maker storyteller who is either made nor def made of nor defined by the story. Instead, he observes, evolves, perceives all aspects of it. Um, in so doing, the mystical shaman represents the ability to dream a new story, a new myth into being. He dances between worlds, wearing the cloak of the world loosely around his shoulders and sings the world into being. He reminds us to be in the world and travel through it, but not to be defined by it or become too attached to the experience. This is the symbol of true alchemy, for all the elements of life have a spiritual aspect and material one. When we remember this, all manner of miracles and manifestations are possible. When the mystical shaman appears, you're invited, to you're invited to consider the ability to live without attachment. You are called to create and dream your life, act on inspiration and divine impulse. Without fixating on a known story of success or achievement, can you impartially observe the stories you tell yourself and others? Wow, this is beautiful. What if you could become a mystery to yourself? What would you become if you stopped telling the tales that have defined you up until now? You do not have to live in a story that has roots in the past. What if there were no need to explain you to anyone, not even to yourself? The way to your most extraordinary life is to become a blank slate and allow the form of your dreams and desires to show up as it will. This is a sign of manifesting a life beyond your wildest dreams. That's what this whole reading's been about. 2020, Virgos, I'm telling you. It's going to be a good for your year for you guys. Okay, so with the eagle. Eagle comes from the east. Place of the rising sun, new beginnings. She soars high in the sky. Sees the smallest detail with clarity without losing track of the bigger picture and nests in the high mountains. For eagle... There are no obstacles, only opportunities. She calls you to ascend, to acquire perspective, so you can fly wing to wing with great spirit. Have you become trapped in your daily routine and feel you do not know where to go and what to do next? Have you lost sense of your purpose? Eagle invites you to take a deep breath and spread your wings. When was the last time you opened them? Eagle reminds you that your spirit was born to soar the heavens. As you contemplate choices, ask yourself, do I want to live in a chicken coop, sheltered from life, counting the regular feedings, or do I want to soar like an eagle? If your answer is the latter, then you must accept eagle's invitation and embrace the courage that will help you choose freedom. 
I love this. 51. The staff. The staff is the symbol of authority. It holds the power to temper extremes. The staff helps you find the right course of action, the way out of the middle, and aids you to maintain your balance after you begin walking in that direction. Moses carried a serpent staff through the desert, and with it he could summon the power of nature to heal or call plagues. The staff reminds you of the impermanence of all things, and that your authority must come from your deep longing to serve. You know how to flow easily between polarities, how to weigh all possibilities and instinctively select the right path. Trust your inner wisdom and take the first step on a journey that your heart has already embarked on. Use the power of the staff to unite what appears to be divided to find that delicate balance between will and surrender. I love this. All right, two more magical dimension cards. I love these. Okay, they're super beautiful. You guys got two. Awakening, card three. This is ancient knowledge, memories, and connection. And emotional freedom, card 12. Another three. Three, three. That's important. Emotional freedom, vulnerability, flowing, and rebalancing. Notice how much water energy. I mean, it's awakening into like a spiritual form here. Okay, I got to read these. Hold on. Three and 12. This is amazing. So here we go. Three. Awakening. This image is connected with the teal sea foam color ray. It's ancient knowledge, memories, and connection. Okay, you may be remembering your ancient wisdom or other ancient knowledge from other civilizations. Uh, an important connection will be forthcoming to assist you. Memories of past lifetimes and recalling spontaneous wisdom may be upcoming, so be prepared for the coming expansion of the mind. You are awakening to the truth of your origins. You have all the tools you need to see the truth in your situation. And your companion crystals for this one are Larimar and Labradorite. I love Labradorite. I'm obsessed with it. I have so, I have it here, here, here. I have a big skull. I love it. I'm loving that. And your companion essential oil is eucalyptus blue. Okay, for that one. Then for emotional freedom. Okay, so this is the vulnerability flowing and rebalancing. Okay, this image is connected with the true blue color ray. So lots of um, blue here with the, the teal sea foam and then this blue. All right, blue is like... Um, you know, the chakra, so it's your throat, uh, third eye, um, yeah, let me see here. You may be feeling emotionally unstable. Sharing your emotions with yourself or others may be scary, but it will help you release them and rebalance your energies. Focus on restoring harmony to your emotional center. Engage in self-loving acts to help you restabilize. Taking sea salt baths will help detox your emotions. Sometimes being vulnerable and open is for our greatest good for growth. Once we release, our stability is regained. And if you don't have a bathtub to take a salt bath in, you can easily, like, fill containers with, like, Epsom salts and stuff. Like, I keep one in my shower because I don't have a tub right now. And I literally, like, do a circle of salt around me and I mix in with my body wash and I, like, salt myself. Um... So that is something you can do as well. And your companion crystals are blue are aragonite and indisolite. Indisolite, I-N-D-I-C-O-L-I-T-E. And your companion essential oil is blue chamomile. So Virgos, that is what I have for you for your 2020 reading. These were like huge. They totally drained me. Um, but I did them and uh, I probably won't ever do it in this format again. Uh, but I did it for now. We could always check back in with these throughout the year, um, see how things are playing out, see for guidance. And as always, you know, please like, share, comment, subscribe, okay? If these resonate with you at all, or if you're curious, if I'm tuning into your energy, your frequency, your story, please subscribe. You'll be notified. I'm going to continue to try to upload for all 12 signs every week. I know that's a lot, but I just really want to do it. 
Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you so much. And I do notice every single subscription. I notice the comments. I notice you guys watching in my watch times and stuff. I appreciate it. I adore you guys. So um, thank you so much for being here. And I hope to see you back next time. Um, bye.